Starting off at number 10 now, we have the Wyoming incident. According to internet legend, this was a broadcast hack that happened in 2008, affecting a number of communities in the town of Niobrara in Wyoming. Their regular news show was interrupted with this. Preparation for the 2008 general election. Republican President <laughs> Jackson. Over the next six minutes or so, viewers were shown text messages and strange visuals with audio snippets playing over them. Every 10 to 15 seconds, a message would appear announcing that this was a special presentation. The text would say things like, You will see such pretty things, and You are ill, we just want to fix you, and What hides in your mind? Now, that last question was later answered with the chilling message of, We have already seen it. What was even stranger was that people reported having a physical reaction to the footage. This included vomiting, hallucinations and headaches. Others said that the frequencies played made viewers eyeballs vibrate and create visual hallucinations. I'm glad we didn't show the whole clip then. Next up at number 9 now we have Max Headroom. Now this is perhaps the most famous one on the list, maybe some of you guys have seen it. On the evening of November 22nd 1987, many people were enjoying an episode of Doctor Who on Chicago WTTW Channel 11. For those Who fans out there, the episode was Horror of Fang Rock. Anyway, the broadcast was interrupted by a signal intrusion. Suddenly viewers saw an unknown person wearing a Max Headroom mask and sunglasses. Max Headroom was a TV character from a show in the mid 80s. The imposter hijacked the broadcast for 90 seconds in which he rambled about Coca Cola, the TV series Clutch Cargo, and WGN anchor Chuck Swirsky. To be honest, even with subtitles, it's quite difficult to make out what's being said. At the time, an FCC engineer said that the perpetrators would face a maximum $10,000 fine, up to a year in prison, or both. It's been over 30 years since the event though, and the culprits have never been caught. Coming in at the number 8 spot now, we have Vrilon. This is a strange one from 1977. During a regular news show on Southern Television, there was a broadcast interruption just after 5pm on November 27th. After some static and visual warping, a voice made this announcement. This is the voice of Vrilon, representative of the Ashtar Galactic Command, speaking to you. That person calling themselves Vrilon claimed to be an alien commander from an intergalactic association. The disembodied voice spoke for about six minutes. The main message was a warning to all humans to put down our weapons of war and to enter a new age of Aquarius. Then, and only then, would we make it to the next level of evolution. Return. Moving on to number 7 now, we have Playboy. I'm sure I don't need to explain to you guys what Playboy is, and if I do, I probably shouldn't. Needless to say, its late night TV shows have been very popular for many, many years. It's one of those channels where you wouldn't expect to see much uh, religious talk, shall we say. However, that's exactly what you would have seen if you tuned into the channel on September 6, 1987. Someone interrupted the broadcast that night and displayed a quote from the Bible. I wonder how that went down with the Playboy viewers. The Bible verses were taken from Exodus and Matthew and read, Thus saith the Lord thy God, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The white text and black background appeared during a movie that Playboy had on called Three daughters and a number of viewers phoned in to ask what was going on. Police were able to trace the signal though and three years later a man called Thomas Haney was identified as the culprit. Next up at number 6 now we have the nuke. Ok for this one I want you guys to do a bit of a imagining now. I want you to imagine you're just chilling at home, just watching a channel that's showing beautiful scenery, live, it's playing relaxing music, that sort of thing. And then you see this. Yeah, that looked a lot like a nuke. And people in Czechoslovakia thought so too when this appeared on a TV show called Panorama in June 2007. The show usually just showed scenic footage of the Czech countryside to attract tourists to Prague and the surrounding area. When the camera appeared to show a nuclear bomb exploding during its morning broadcast, all hell broke loose. Some people who lived in the area started trying to leave before the radiation spread. Others were contacting the government asking what to do. The government received so 
many panic calls that they had to issue an official statement confirming that Prague had not been bombed. It turns out that the footage was created as a performance piece by a group called Zethoven. I'm sure their artistic message is appreciated by some people out there, but maybe not the ones who thought they were actually having to flee for their lives. Coming in at the number 5 spot now guys, we have The Old Couple. This is a really strange one that occurred in July 2007. During regular broadcasting on ABC's affiliate channel WJLA, this image appeared on the screen. Now, To this day, nobody is exactly sure what this picture is of. Clearly it's two faces, one of them is smiling and one of them looks quite concerned. The faces look like they've been computer generated. Now to me, it looks like something out of a 90s video game. This creepy image stayed on the screen for several seconds with no sound before completely vanishing. Many people said there was a dark meaning to all of this, that this was no ordinary interruption. The cable company in charge of the broadcast said there was a programming mix up from an advertisement for the Oprah Winfrey show. That seemed to satisfy by most people, but things took a turn when videos of the event were all removed from YouTube due to restricted access. To this day, I still couldn't find any clips of this on YouTube. All that has survived is this image and the questions that come with it. Coming at number 4 now, we have War of the Worlds. Have you guys ever seen the War of the Worlds movie with Tom Cruise? I really like that movie, I'm not going to lie. But did you know where the title for that movie came from? In 1938, future filmmaking legend Orson Welles created a radio drama based on H.G. Wells' novel The War of the Worlds. It was made to sound like a genuine news broadcast about aliens from Mars invading Earth. If you guys were to hear it on the radio today, you might think, oh, this is obviously a piece of written drama. It's not real. Well, back in 1938, on the eve of World War II, it was a very different time. Many people listening to the broadcast missed the introduction where it clearly states that the following is a piece of radio drama and they thought it was totally real. This is what they heard. About 20 yards to my right. Ladies and gentlemen, due to circumstances beyond our control, we are unable to continue the broadcast from Grover's Mill. Now, according to legend, some people were so convinced that America was being invaded by Martians that they fled their homes in a panic. In the following days, there was an outcry for broadcasters to be regulated to stop this thing kind of happening ever again. That failed and the piece went down in history as one of the most famous pieces of radio drama ever and possibly one of the greatest pranks of all time. Next up at number 3 now we have Handy Manny. Some of our North American viewers may have grown up watching this kid show. The animated TV series follows Manny, a repairman with talking tools. It's fun, it's educational, they sing, you get the idea. Handy Manny is also famous though for a shocking broadcast interruption which occurred on May 1st 2007. Viewers of the show in Lynn Croft, New Jersey had their episode interrupted by a clip from an adult movie. Yeah, say no more. Many of the other interruptions we've talked about usually last for 10, 15, 30 seconds. The adult film clip on Handy Manny went on for several minutes. Naturally, people wanted an explanation. Thousands of kids must have seen this. Comcast was the network that was responsible for the intrusion, or at least they should have been the ones to stop it from happening. They didn't have an answer for why it happened, and over a decade on now, they still don't. Moving on to number two now, we have May Day. On January 3rd, 2007, Channel 7 in Australia was airing a Canadian documentary called May Day, which features cases of air disasters. At some point during the broadcast, things got strange. The visuals continued continued as normal, but the audio started repeating a single phrase on a loop. One quick thinking YouTuber uploaded this video of the event. Many people think that the voice is that of a man from America's deep south saying the phrase, Jesus Christ help us all Lord. See what you think. That went on for an astonishing 6 minutes before everything returned to normal. Many people wanted answers, but Channel 7 were very evasive. They denied that there had been an intrusion, but also disputed what the clip was actually saying. They claimed the voice said, Jesus Christ, one of the Nazarenes. The fact that so many people disagree with that has only added fuel to the fire that something very strange happened that day. And finally number 1 now, we have Coast to Coast AM. That's the name of this talk show run by Art Bell. He was used 
to strange calls on his show, but things got even stranger on September 12th, 1997. That night, Art got a call from a guy who claimed to have been an employee at the mysterious Area 51 base, where conspiracy theorists say the US Air Force contained and studied aliens and their crashed spacecraft. The caller sounded terrified and claimed that they were coming for him and that he didn't have much time to share with the world what he knew about Area 51. He talked about extra dimensional beings who are not what they appear to be, that they have infiltrated the US military and are now taking over. Okay, well, what we're thinking of as, as aliens are they're, uh, they're, they're extra dimensional beings. The caller began to sound more erratic and panicked. Finally, he started talking about how governments are trying to get human populations down to a manageable number so that they're easier to control. Just after this, the line went dead when the power cut out at the station. By the time they got the backup generators running, the caller was gone. Conspiracy theorists say that it was more than a coincidence that the caller was cut off and never heard from again just when he began to spill the beans on secret government activity. What do you guys think? All right, coming into number 10, we have the earthquake. Shake, shake, horror, shake. This actually really terrified me. In September 2017, a Mexican news station, Foro TV, was broadcasting live on air from Mexico City. This was when the studio was hit with a 7.1 magnitude earthquake. Oh my God. The reporter at first looks calm and determined to finish his segment, but then have a look at the fear in his eyes. Check it out. Then what's even scarier is when the camera cuts to another shot and you can see the equipment in the studio swinging violently overhead. Have a look. I think if I were the reporter, I'd be more concerned about one of the heavy lights coming down and smashing my head open than I would be about the ground opening up, but honestly, both concerning. Imagine seeing this on live television too, like how terrifying. The earthquake was actually the deadliest to hit Mexico in more than 30 years. Coming into number 9, we have the sexy Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is a family friendly viewing activity. Kids and adults alike get together to watch their favourite teams. But in 2009, 80,000 viewers in Tucson got an unexpected eyeful. Standard definition viewers had their Super Bowl Comcast coverage interrupted by hardcore porn for an eye watering 37 seconds. It seems that a cable employee was behind the interruption and Comcast cable had to fork out $800,000 in compensation. This went to viewers who had seen the saucy footage in place of the Pittsburgh Cardinals game. Coming in at number 8, Anonymous Hack Fox News. In 2015, hacktivists Anonymous, known for their creepy smiling guy Fox masks and altered voices took over a live Fox News broadcast. Fox News was conducting a euthanasia interview with Dr. Jack Kevorkian when Anonymous took over. Have a watch. They deserve it. Dear Fox News, it has come to our attention that you have been alienating the American people. They berated Fox for purposefully scaring people about terrorism and covering up corporate corruption. Anonymous said, You have sacrificed your journalistic integrity for the dollar. Unfortunately for you, the dollar cannot stop an idea whose time has come. They end up by saying that they've been watching Fox and they know what they've been doing, and also they've been poisoning the minds of America for too long. Anonymous does not forgive and does not forget. I quote, Honestly, this is pretty scary, especially because of the masks. But I have to say, I do enjoy this kind of horror movie, so I'm just gonna sit back and popcorn it up. Fox News, who knew? Coming in at number 7, we have Captain Midnight. I love a good strike story, an instance of standing up to the man, and this is exactly what Captain Midnight was attempting to do. Why? Because cable was really expensive. Captain Midnight was a character constructed by an HBO electrical engineer who was annoyed at the channel for raising their subscription prices to $12.95 a month, which back in the day that this happened was around 30 bucks. This was the 80s, and 30 bucks a month is a lot to watch TV. While that doesn't sound that scary, the takeover did include include a threat. It said, Showtime Movie Channel Beware. Here's a clip of the moment that the takeover happened. Then 
there was a period of black and white with kind of messed up signals which was pretty chilling, check it out. One of the commenters on the video added further insight into the incident, BNSF1995 said, all of the crackling throughout is the HBO broadcasting station trying to up their power and Captain Midnight fighting back by upping his power, eventually HBO lost and was forced to stop at risk of blowing their transmitters. Oof. Coming into number 6 we have Monsters in Marquette. Zombies? In America? You heard it here first. In 2013, an emergency broadcast went out on two television stations affiliated with PBS and ABC in Marquette, Michigan. Am I saying this right Michigan? Is it Marquette? Is it Marquee? You let me know. The stations were infiltrated by trickster hackers who put out an alert to say that civil authorities in your area have reported that the bodies of the dead are rising from their graves and attacking the living. What? This was in like a banner across the screen and it was worrying. The message said follow the messages on this screen that will be updated as information becomes available. Do not attempt to approach or apprehend these bodies as they are considered extremely dangerous. Ah. Some people were genuinely concerned when they read this, other people saw the funny side and some people thought it was very disrespectful. I honestly do see the funny side, it was clearly a hack to me but I get it that this is not what you want to hear from your trusted local news station. The local station manager and news director Cynthia Thompson issued a statement on behalf of ABC10 saying that the channel was working on rectifying the hack. Coming into number 5, the CNN coup d'etat. On July the 15th 2016, CNN Turk, the Turk Turkish branch of the CNN television network was taken over by force by rebelling soldiers. As CNN Turk were reporting on the coup against President Erdogan, armed members of the country's militia stormed the studio and forced broadcasters off air. I can't find the moment that the anchors were actually dragged off air, but I can find some pandemonium in the studio footage. One guy goes up to the camera to try and explain what's happening, but he doesn't realise that all the microphones are off. Employees filmed the chaos as armed militia dragged them from their building. Honestly, how worrying does this all look? Can you imagine being a Turkish citizen watching TV and seeing all of this happen before your very eyes live? Sometimes watching live coverage of Brexit is stressful, but this is like a whole new level. Coming into number 4, we have The Buzzer. So this is a bit of a broadcast mystery right here. UVB76, also known as The Buzzer, is a radio station that broadcasts on the frequency of 4625kHz. Now the radio station is pretty boring. Or is it? It's a series of buzzes repeated every 25 minutes for 24 hours a day. It usually sounds a bit like this. broadcast is interrupted by a voice speaking in Russian. Now, the voice is oddly instructive. The station has been noted since the 1970s and there are all kinds of conspiracy theories as to what the beeps and interruptions mean. On Christmas Eve 1997 for example, the voice interruption came at 9pm GMT. This time after a series of nonsensical numbers and letters, the names Boris, Roman, Olga, Mikhail, Anna and Larissa were mentioned. Why? Since 2010, voice messages have increased and a lot of people have come up with many speculative reasons. The general consensus is that it's a Russian spy channel. Shortly before the 2016 presidential election, the buzzer was broadcasting even more than ever. So what does this mean? Coming into number 3, so scary, we have This Is War. A declaration of war interrupting live TV, honestly this is very terrifying especially considering the likelihood that if you're watching the channel live, you probably live in the country or you're at least in the country that's at war. In July 2006, Lebanese fighters fired shots over the Israeli border, leading to a 34 day war in which Israel retaliated very very hard. We know that there's a lot of historical beef here, but honestly finding out that you're at war on TV is stressful. Israeli hackers took control of the Islamic Lebanese political party, Hezbollah's TV station with a chilling message of war. The hijack signals started showing images of dead Hezbollah guerrilla soldiers, which is not what you want to see. An image of the political party leader was then shown, along with sounds of gunshots and a voice saying your day is coming. So it was a declaration of war and also a massive threat. Coming into number two, 
we have the Christine Chubbuck broadcast. Christine Chubbuck was a 29 year old news reporter who worked at WTOG and WXLTV in Florida. It seems that the reporter was depressed and had joked about suicide, but on the morning of the 15th of July 1974, the young woman took over Suncoast Digest, something that she'd never done before. She delivered 8 minutes of news and then a film reel that was supposed to show a restaurant shooting, but this film jammed. The anchor shrugged it off and calmly said, in keeping with channel 40's policy of bringing you the latest in blood and guts and in living colour, you're going to see another first. Attempted suicide. She then shot herself live on air behind the right ear and died of her injuries. The technical director cut the footage as soon as they could but thousands of people saw the death happening before their eyes. Later it was revealed that the whole event had been scripted by Christine who must have planned her baffling takeover. Unless you if you saw the footage live, you'll never see the instant. Luckily, the tapes of the death have been destroyed, and if there are any remaining, they are heavily under lock and key. There was a Sundance movie starring Rebecca Hall where the infamous moment was reenacted, so if you want to get a sense, here's a clip. WZRB policy. Don't give up on it. Presenting the most immediate and complete reports of local blood and guts. TV30 presents what is believed to be a television first. Finally, I really hate to say this at number one, we have The Assassin. This is one of the scariest and most awful TV interruptions of all time, and out of respect for the dead, I'm not going to show you any of the footage, I'll just tell you the story. In August 2015, a local TV reporter and a cameraman were shot dead in the middle of a live news broadcast for WDJB in Virginia. This all happened at 6.45 in the morning. Reporter Alison Parker and cameraman Adam Ward were broadcasting a live interview with an official from the Chamber of Commerce. This all happened when they came under fire. The official Vicky Gardner was harmed, but she did survive. She said she played dead. The gunman was a former reporter at the same station. Vestali Flanagan, known under the on-air name of Bryce Williams. The perpetrator shot himself hours afterwards following a police pursuit. Audiences saw the murder live on air, which was quickly cut back to the studio. Flanagan had also recorded the incident on a GoPro and uploaded it to the internet. Sickening. Luckily, it has since been removed. Parker and Ward's co workers were offered counseling, but it really shocked a lot of people. At number 10, we have Max Headroom. If you were in Chicago in 1987, then you probably saw one of the craziest things that has ever been on TV. It was so nuts because it made absolutely no sense and nothing was explained. It just popped up for 90 seconds and it took over the city and then it was gone. It was kind of like having a robber come into your home, steal nothing, but then throw Throw syrup in your face and then leave. And you're just sitting there like, what just happened? Let's have a look at this clip. That is what people were watching for 90 seconds in the middle of an episode of Doctor Who. The worst part is back then you couldn't rewind TV, so a bunch of people at home were probably like, that was weird, but what happened to those 90 seconds of Doctor Who? I gotta wait until they play the episode again. And it got even weirder than what I showed you. At one point that masked figure got up, pulled down his pants, got on a chair, and this lady in a French maid's costume came up and started spanking him with a fly swatter. It's just so weird, there's no answers and we never know who did it. Like they never caught the guy, so it's just sitting there in the ether and everyone was confused. At number nine, we have Looney Larry. You thought the only time kids would be safe was while they're watching cartoons. It turns out kids are never safe, thanks global warming. But there was a broadcast that was hacked in Wisconsin. A bunch of kids were just hanging out, watching SpongeBob. Well, if it was SpongeBob, it was probably a bunch of kids and some college students as well. But out of nowhere, the show was switched to this dude who called himself Looney Larry. Hi, this is Looney Larry. Uh, welcome to my show. And uh, the clip goes on like that, and Larry does some pretty strange stuff, like breaking SpongeBob records in this creepy basement and saying some pretty controversial things that I won't repeat here. At number eight, we have Disney Channel porn. This story is so cliche, it almost seems like it would never happen outside of a movie, but here we are. There was one sunny morning where a bunch of kids were sitting around 
watching the Disney Channel, probably while their parents were getting stuff ready so they could go to school. And then some hardcore porn got laid over the broadcast. It was 2007 in New Jersey, and a bunch of kids who were watching a show called Handy Manny stopped seeing a young boy living out his dreams of carpentry and instead saw something that is only safe for mommies and daddies who love each other. Comcast was the cable network that caused the mix up, but they never said why they screwed up so royally. They just used the shaggy method and said, it wasn't me. And number seven, we have Fight for Freedom. Not all the TV interruptions have to be perverted or weird to be scary. Some of them can be totally for a good cause, but they will scare the crap out of you because you have no idea what that means for your country. And it could mean that it's time for a revolution. And revolutions are always terrifying because people will just start dying. In the city of Torin in Poland, a broadcast got stolen in 1985. Why? Because four very important people in the Polish science community had a message for the people. They wanted everyone to boycott the upcoming election. They were tired of how the government had been taking from the people and demanded that the people rise up against them. The police were able to trace the signal back to these four men, but because of civil unrest and fear of a revolution, they didn't arrest them but only fine them. Yeah, public officials start to be real nice when the walls are closing in on them. And number six, we have a porn reversal. I don't know if you guys remember Playboy television or even Playboy, but back in the day, people used to have to watch porn on TV. You didn't get to search everything based on very specific perversions that you have deep inside your brain. No, you had to sit down and watch the Playboy channel or another channel like that, and it would be porn all day long. And one day, 1987, there was a broadcast that got interrupted by a bunch of scary texts. It said, Thus saith the Lord thy God, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yes, it was religious text. See, it's not just porn that can interrupt something wholesome. You can also interrupt porn with something pure and it's totally jarring. The police eventually tracked this guy down and this wasn't the only time he had done something like this. And this was all pre-internet era. This guy probably is disgusted by the way the world is now. If you can handle the Playboy channel, woo. At number five, we have C-SPAN meets Russia. A lot of people tune into C-SPAN to get their daily dose of news. And there was one day in 2017 when everything was going as normal. There was a bunch of people in suits talking about the budget and deficit in Congress. And then out of nowhere, it stopped being about boring politics. And then it was just a boring Russian talk show. Everyone was like, what is happening? And this didn't just pop up for a few seconds and then disappear. It was on the screen for 10 minutes. That's a long time to have interference with a Russian signal. Now, why is this on a list of top 10 scary TV interruptions? Well, that's because a lot of people think this was Russia testing their ability to hijack American television signals. And it was extremely successful if that's what it was. That means they could still be doing this but not switching our programming but grabbing our data. Stay away from my data Russia. No one needs to know what my data is except for Instagram so they can give me better ads. Yeah I want the good ads. Discount Steam games and gaming accessories. See that's how you get the good ones. At number four, we have zombies. Sometimes you're just trying to watch some trash TV and then a zombie outbreak ruins everything. And if you don't watch trash TV, then I don't trust you. And you deserve to be eaten by zombies because you're up to something. I don't know, I don't know what it is. Well, there was an episode of the Steve Wilkos show that was just being as trash as ever. Everyone around the world was just drinking it in and loving every second of watching people's lives fall apart. And then they got hit with some news that told them that their life was about to fall apart. Well, if you lived in Montana, you did. This following message started moving across the screen. Civil authorities in your area have reported that the bodies of the dead are rising from their graves and attacking the living. Follow the message. That is terrifying and also you shouldn't do that to people. Not because it's going to scare them, but because someone is going to get really eager. Some people have been waiting their whole life for the apocalypse and now they have the chance to go full apocalypse. You're just giving them false hope, like that's rude. At number three we have the old couple. The less context you have about something, the scarier it can be. Like if you got a text and it just said, I'm going to kill you from an unknown number, that's super scary. But if you get a text that says, I'm gonna kill you, and it's from your roommate and used his toothbrush to clean the bathroom, then you're like, oh, okay, this totally makes sense. I don't have to freak out about this. I mean, I shouldn't go home, but I get why this is happening. Well, in 2007, ABC signal was hijacked and all that was thrown up on the screen was the face of two old people staring back at the viewer. Then it was gone. There has never been a hint as to what this 
this could have been or where it came from. ABC said it was a small mistake, but they have worked effortlessly to get every picture and every video removed from everything. You can't find these videos on YouTube or anywhere. It seems like this has been a major cover up, but the biggest question is why? Why the hell would you cover this up if it was something so small? And number two, we have threats against the Hezbollah. In 2006, the Israel Lebanon war was reaching new heights. As the old saying goes, all is fair in love and war. Israel wanted to find more ways to attack Lebanon outside of just explosives and bullets. The Hezbollah was a group that was very much the spearhead in the war against Israel. And they had a television channel known as Al Manar TV. This is how a lot of people in Lebanon would get political information and updates on the war. Well, Israel found a way to hijack this signal and send a very threatening signal to all the people in Lebanon. They showed the leader of the Hezbollah with a crosshair over his face and the message, your time will come. If you're at home watching that channel for the news and then you see this, this would be so terrifying. You wouldn't be able to fall asleep after that. And for our number one spot, we have Christine Chubbuck. One of the most shocking things to ever happen on television. It changed news, it changed broadcasting, and it changed the world. Christine Chubbuck was a news anchor and her life wasn't moving exactly as she wanted. She was constantly battling against the different parts of her life. She wanted to bring interesting, wholesome news stories into the news, but that's not what got views. It was salacious death and terror that people wanted to watch. So her bosses were pushing her to find those kinds of stories. Her love life wasn't exactly what she wanted either. It's believed that at 30 years old, Christine had never been physically intimate with anyone. With that plus a few other factors stacked on top of her, like her inability to have children, she was dipping into a very depressed state. Because of all this, on July 15th, 1974, she walked into the studio, started a live broadcast, and then committed suicide on live television. People originally thought it was a prank. It wasn't until the story was in newspapers that everyone knew it was real. All right, everyone, that has been our list. And as promised, I'm going to be doing some more pet shout outs. Remember, if you want me to shout out your pet, you can message me on Instagram. I picked new pets every day. So if you don't get picked one day, you can message back another day. If it takes me a little while to get back to you, I am very sorry. I have a lot of these to do. And without taking any longer, let's shout out some pets. First off, we've got this shaggy looking dog named Chewbacca. Look at that hair, living up to the name. So good. Then we got Hades, who is way too cute to be the lord of the underworld. Oh my god, look at that face. After that, we have Harlow, Toby, and Paris. This is a team of doggos that looks absolutely amazing together. I love them. They have matching coats. Are you serious? Their coats match. That is so good. Next we have Peanut, who you can see by the cuto meter is super cute because the meter is maxed out. Like there's no other explanation for this. He's clearly the cutest. Then we've got Savoir, who has the biggest smile ever. Oh, look at how excited he is for life. And to end off, we have Timmy, who's one of the biggest sweethearts ever. Look at those big old eyes. Obviously, just a nice picture done right there. Yeah, with the with the statue and all that stuff, the statue there and the cat. It's very tasteful. Mm -hmm.